Hello and welcome to Together in Worship on this Palm Sunday. Wherever you are, you're part of a crowd of people singing praises to God today. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It's a day of rejoicing in Jesus, our king. We picture him riding in lowly majesty towards the gates of Jerusalem, with crowds surrounding him. Our first song is a call for us to make way for the King of Kings. Psalm 24 says, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. In our worship, we might imagine those crowds watching Jesus riding past. We hear them singing Hosanna. But here today, we welcome him into our hearts. He is our King, and we worship him.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we gather together in worship today, it's as if we join the crowds on that first Palm Sunday. It's easy for us to imagine the bright colours of the coats being spread on the floor, the branches held high, the shouts of young and old as they cry Hosanna and sing your praises. Yes, we would praise you today, for you are our King, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Your majesty, we can but bow. We lay our all before you now. We offer you the time of worship. We give thanks for your blessings, for answered prayer. We also put our faith and trust in you for prayers yet to be answered, for hope in you, for an awareness of your love in our lives, whatever our circumstances. You are indeed Lord over all. Draw near to us today in these quiet moments we spend together in worship and may we know your grace and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 21 As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee.
for a new leader. That's being said in so many places, in so many ways this year, whether in a democracy, a dictatorship, even a religion, people yearn for a change of leader when they feel things are going badly. So leaders get voted in and voted out. Prime ministers and most presidents come and go, but what happens when the president won't go? What happens when the elections are rigged to keep him in place? Or what happens when your country has been led by a foreign invader? Oh, that someone would come and change it all. In our country, does a certain political party need a new leader? Does the country itself need one? In the US, there's the run-up to the election of the new president. In Ireland, the Prime Minister has unexpectedly resigned. Some countries want to change, others resist change. But whether new people take charge or it's still the same, people want things to be better. Sometimes the desire for change is so strong, anything new will do. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people were desperate for change. They had been for a while, and many men had come and gone, all promising change, freedom, a new kingdom. They had positioned themselves as freedom fighters, some even as God's chosen one, and they had all failed. There's a line in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar where Pontius Pilate sums it all up in his words to the crowd, you Jews produce messiahs by the sackful. And history tells us that was true. It has to be said that there were many in the crowd on that first Palm Sunday, as we now call it, who believed that Jesus was just the latest who would try to be successful. He would overturn the Romans, though the others couldn't. He would reform the priests and the temple, though the others didn't. And they shouted Hosanna, which was in part a prayer, but also part of a political rallying cry. It happens a lot in demonstrations. People will chant slogans as they walk with thousands of others down a high street. Activists and protesters in the time of Jesus would shout, Hosanna, save us. Not save our souls, but save us from the Romans, save us from our leaders. The familiar message of Palm Sunday with the humble donkey and the praises of the children, seen with hindsight of course, is that Jesus wasn't that kind of Messiah. He wasn't the conquering hero. He was not their idea of the expected king. He was the unexpected king. They had in mind the kind of king they wanted, but Jesus turned out not to be the one that they wanted. They had in mind a king who would rally the protesters, overturn the oppressors. But this was a king who would heal, save and forgive. But unexpected or not, wanted or not, he was still the king they needed. The donkey, used in deliberate fulfilment of prophecy, shows that he was serious about that. And that's the tragedy of it all. As the king who could have brought peace, as the one who wanted to gather his people as a hen gathers her chicks, he came to his own, but his own received him not. He is the world's king, the prince of peace, but the world doesn't know him. He's not just the unexpected king, he's forever the unwanted king, unneeded, forever crucified on a cross of unbelief and our own sins. Isaiah predicted it 750 years before Jesus came to Jerusalem. In the words of the King James Bible, he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, 
and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. If Jesus were to ride through the streets of London today, as people cheered and waved flags, there would be people with yellow placards declaring, Not my king! But we worship him as king. Our lives are given to him. The change he brings is a change of heart. And that's the gospel. We believe and preach and share with the world. A changed heart. And I wonder if we have an unexpected, unwanted king, if we also have an unexpected gospel. Some people forget that faith is more than just an opinion. The Romans were fine with the Jewish religion as long as it was in the home or in the temple. They didn't want interference, discontent, people preaching in public. Do you remember, if you are an older person, the saying, children should be seen and not heard? Well, the Romans thought that about the Jewish faith. Keep it at home. Keep it in the temple. And the Romans were not going to like this display of religious fervour on the streets as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. But people misunderstand Jesus because our faith in him is not just personal belief or even public worship. It's who we are and what we do. It's about families and communities and caring for others. We don't just love Jesus, we follow him as leader, as the king who can change lives, bring hope to communities. Jesus came telling us we should feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give water to the thirsty, as we also tell them of grace and salvation. And that's what Palm Sunday is about. The King who changes lives. We rejoice because the King is coming. And in his name, the church tries to bring some of that change that people really want. The Salvation Army's mission is to save souls and also to grow saints, and that's why we're here. It's also to serve suffering humanity. In a world crying out for change, the work of the whole church is to bring the leadership of Jesus into people's lives, as well as meeting their physical needs. We lift Jesus up so that he will draw people to him. I love the story of Palm Sunday. It's exciting, it's colorful, noisy, joyful, Singing Hosanna has become the easiest way of praise, praising Jesus that even children can sing. On that day, there were people who got the wrong end of the palm branch, of course. They really did think a warrior had arrived. Then there were those close to Jesus who knew who he was. And maybe, although they hadn't grasped the full truth, they knew enough. And here's the greatest question. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. They knew enough that Jesus came from God. They knew he came in the name of the Lord. They knew this much. They needed him. And though some got it wrong then, after the resurrection, people knew just how much they needed him as king of their heart, as saviour and lord. And in weeks, thousands of people came to believe in him, to trust in him, the crucified and risen king. Maybe we could say the same. We have needed him, his grace, his mercy, his peace and guidance. He has been and will always be the leader we follow the one we honour. There literally is no other name but Jesus. Now none but Christ can satisfy. No other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy, Lord Jesus, found in thee. It really is Jesus we need. And we thank God that we know him today.
pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are the one we need most today. You have the words of eternal life. You come to us to change hearts and lives, to inspire your people to follow your example of compassion and service. Open the eyes of the world to see your glory. As you rode into Jerusalem, you saw that the road would lead to the cross. You are the servant king, the crucified Lord. And in that we see your glory when you are lifted up. Help us in this holy week to think again of the cross where you died for us all, and then to look with hope to the empty tomb where there is light and life. We confess that you are the king we need, the king of love. Accept our worship, our love, our lives. Amen. As we come to the end of Palm Sunday worship, we look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday, not forgetting that Good Friday is the solemn day when we gather at the cross. We close with the more reflective song that takes us there. My song is Love Unknown. God bless you.